Okay, the teaching on uh, Matthew 24, or what we call No Man Knows the Day or the Hour, is one that um, I learned well over, over 30 years ago uh, from Dr. Gene Scott. And I'm a little bit surprised that the Christian world still doesn't have a full grasp of this. So here we go, Doc. We'll give it one more, t one more try. Um, Matthew 24 uh, needs to be understood in its entirety, um, not just in the line, no man knows the day or the hour, not even the angels of heaven, which comes at the uh, 36th verse. So, um, if we if we go back even to the last uh, chapter of the 23rd, the last verse of the 23rd chapter, last couple of verses, O Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I've longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. Okay, talking to the Jews now. How I wish you'd have just followed me as your Messiah, but you didn't. So look, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, this is important when we get to uh, Daniel, when we get later here in Matthew. Uh, I, want, I really think people need to, to pay attention to this. Now, the beginning of the 24th chapter, Jesus leaves the temple. He's walking away. His disciples call attention to the buildings. And he says, you see all these things? I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. They'll all be thrown down. Now, this is an important backstory to Matthew 24, to no man knows the day or the hour. Jesus is sitting on the Mount of Olives, and it says in my Bible anyway, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Okay, so right off the bat, we know we're talking about the temple being destroyed in the end of the age. And he starts out by telling them to watch out. There'll be false Christ. You know, there'll, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. But don't get alarmed. These kind of things have to happen. A nation will rise against nation. And all, all these are but the beginnings of birth pains. He says in verse 9, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. To me, that's a very important understanding. This cannot be something that was accomplished in Antiochus Epiphanes or Hitler. Uh, yes, they were handed over to be persecuted and such, but not in the name of Jesus. This is Jesus talking, remember. Um, you will be handed over to be persecuted and hated by all nations because of me. So that certainly hasn't happened to the Jews yet, nor are we at the end of the age, which is when the disciples were asking about hey tell us what when is this going to happen what's going to be the sign of of this when you come again all right so he's saying that they're going to be handed over to be persecuted hated by all nations because of me which is very strange so this isn't i remember learning this this was always to christians um, we're handed over to all nations to be persecuted because we believe in Jesus and we're hated by all nations because of Jesus. So that satisfies that scripture. But that's not at all what Jesus is talking about if you, if you bother to grab the context of where we're at here. Uh, this is Jesus describing to his disciples about the temple, about the Jewish nation, about him coming. To, again, there's no Christianity Jesus has not died and risen yet. Uh, Paul didn't come along and start writing these those letters that become the dogmas of Christianity for a, for a dozen years. So this is long before there's any such understanding as you're saved by grace in the Lord Jesus. None of that existed yet. Uh, this is him answering to them what it was going to be like for the Jews at the end of the age. And more of the proof is here uh, in verse 15. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Not, no one go on the, from the roof and go back down. This is going to be worse than has ever been seen before by the nations. 
uh, God forbid for the mothers who are giving nursing their their babies in those days and if God did shorten the days there would be no flesh meaning Jewish race left to save um, so we know he's not talking about something that already happened because this hasn't happened and now there is no holy place so it they don't have their holy of holies yet this is they're still trying to rebuild their temple so they they haven't gotten to the end just quite yet but it's those of us who have been watching the history we know that that's what they're trying to do but anyway about no man knows the day or the hour we're still getting there he's he's explaining to them what it's going to look like um, when you see the abomination spoken of by the prophet Daniel and we know that's right at the end before the their false deliverer what the Christians call the Antichrist and we have to teach about who the Antichrist is um, but that's when all that's taken place so we know this is the time that he's talking about this is not in the past and this is not about Christians okay so now if we look at Paul who is a Pharisee who is converted and is now writing the understanding that he claims he got straight from Jesus Christ uh, Paul in 1st Thessalonians tells us uh, in the fifth chapter that when the Jews and Gentiles say peace and safety sudden destruction is going to come on them now the Jews and Gentiles have never said peace and safety since the time of Christ I mean there really hasn't they haven't said peace and safety since uh, since they went and rebuilt the second uh, temple and even then they, they didn't get much peace and safety so there's never been that time yet when the Jews and Gentiles say peace and safety sudden destruction comes on them okay now stay with me now in in Matthew in the 42nd verse which is just after the no man knows the day or the hour he tells them therefore keep watch because you don't know on what day your Lord will come but understand this if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into so you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him okay, again he's talking to the Jews he's gonna come and you're not going to expect him because of course they're not reading the New Testament they're not they don't know the day or the hour of his return but that's still not what that scripture refers to and we're gonna get there now also in first Thessalonians 5 we go back there and Paul says you're not children of the light or appointed unto wrath so Paul's telling them that at this time when the Jews and Gentiles are saying peace and safety and sudden destruction well you're not children of the the darkness that that day should overtake you but you're children of the light so and then you have Paul a chapter before when when he was consoling them about the dead we don't want you to be ignorant brothers about the people who have fallen asleep right I mean you're worried what happens the Lord's gonna come and they're still in the ground somewhere no I tell you but the Lord's own word he's gonna come and call them out of the grave the dead will rise first then we which are alive and remain so this is another pretty good sign about um, the day and the hour because of course this is all prior to the seven-year tribulation um, and if you've listened to our teaching on Jonah then you know that there's a real expectation in the pattern and, and fulfillment of Jonah that what Paul's seeing is the dead would rise first he doesn't seem to make the connection but Jesus did say sign of Jonah was the only one the Jews were going to get and so it makes sense that if these dead that rise like they did in Jesus time rise first 40 days before the living that Paul is predicting uh, then that fulfills the sign of Jonah and the prediction of Paul now I want to bring this together uh, into the, uh, what the Jewish position is and people hear me say this a lot and I hope you understand that it's very important the Orthodox Jewish position is the closest thing a Christian can get um, to the other side of the coin it's uh, Jesus remember is the Jewish Messiah he didn't come to start the Christian church 
as Paul teaches, that was the outgrowth of the Jews rejecting him, which Paul uh, says God did in his greater wisdom, in his greater grace to give it to anyone now, to make it not something you had to be circumcised. You don't have to get it that way. God can give it to anyone, and he can do that because Jesus sacrificed himself not just for the Jews, not just as the Messiah, but as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And Peter confirms that with uh, the, the Roman centurion when he realizes surely God has um, saved everybody. He doesn't play favoritism and will accept men of all nations as long as they fear God and do what is right. And we'll do some more teaching on what is right. But for now, no man knows the day or the hour. So the Jewish position, uh, we've been teaching this more and more, the Birkat HaChemah. Uh, is a celestial anomaly that only happens three times in the whole history of mankind and the third one's already taken place and the Jews associate it with their uh, national redemption of their race uh, when, it's, when there's been people that have tried to exterminate them throughout history and that that is when God shows up to save them and happens to coincide with these celestial anomaly which has just taken place in the past few years and so they... Um, uh, their evangelical orthodox says that this is the time. They are in the time of the final redemption. They know, as I've tried to teach from Nebuchadnezzar's image in Daniel 2, that in the days of these kings, uh, and these are Muslim kings, this is their half-brother Ishmael, who they know from other related scripture, all the way back from Moses and, the, and, and Genesis, it would be their half-mother Ishmael that would eventually hold sway over them. And right now it is their half-brother Ishmael that surrounds them. And in Daniel, it says in the days of these kings, these ten-toed kings represented by the image, which are cert most certainly Muslim kings. Uh, also that they're waiting in the spring. They know it's a spring feast in fulfillment of their law that their Messiah must come. He must come in fulfillment of the law in the spring. And the Orthodox uh, also understand that this will be accompanied by dead coming out of the graves uh, because Ezekiel, Zedekiah both uh, talk about multitudes coming out of the graves, not just the Christian scriptures. And at the moment, as I said, they're currently concerned about being handed over to be persecuted, uh, which is what uh, Jesus is telling them here. They don't read this, but we do as Christians. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. So they're in the, this very moment very concerned about being handed over to be persecuted. Um, if you read Roy Newberger, everybody should go to the, my father's website, brosal.org. And, um, and get the Roy Newberger interview and, and probably sign up for Roy Newberger's newsletters. I never miss them. It, it's really amazing how he sees the same thing coming that we see, and that is the, their half-brother Ishmael is about to get power in the world, and of course they want to use it to eradicate the Jewish nation. And the Jews know that that's what their prophecy says is going to happen, except that their Messiah is going to save them and set them up as a great nation in the world. And, that, and they're waiting for that to happen in this time. So now, no man knows the day or the hour. So what I want to get at is, the Jews don't know, as in verse 42, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But now the brethren, according to Paul, the Christians... They know because you are children of the light, not children of the darkness, that that day should overtake you like a thief. Isn't that interesting that he uses, you know, Paul's a Pharisee. You think he doesn't know the, the terminology. You know, God forbid that day should overtake you as a thief. Okay, and so how do we know? Well, shoot, the Jews know. It comes in the spring. It associates with these celestial anomalies like Berkat HaChemah. Dead people are coming to come out of the grave, according to Jesus, the sign of Jonah, probably 40 days before the living uh, ascend, 
like it happened in Jesus' time. And they'll be doing what Jonah said. They'll be warning. 40 days, the Messiah Jesus is going to come and judge you. And that gives some credence to the, to the rest of that line that you'll be handed over to be persecuted and hated by all nations because of me. Um, because, of course, the, the Jews are predicted to finally get right with God and have their kingdom set up. And if you're a Christian, you know it's because they finally realize that Jesus is the Messiah. And so how could they be hated because of Jesus unless at that time they realized Jesus was the Messiah, which all has to happen in this end time period. And it's all quite clearly coming to pass. The feet of Nebuchadnezzar's image, the Muslim kings, the little horn who's risen up and caused three to be uprooted, or at least two and one's on the run. The, uh, uh, all of these things are taking place. The, the, the Jews fearing their position right now in the face of their half-brother Ishmael. Um, so, no man knows the day or the hour. Let's go to that now. Now, learn this lesson from the fig tree, Jesus tells them. Um, the sign of his coming. Let's go back a little so everybody can understand this. Uh, verse 30, at the time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. And we'll have to teach on that because, of course, this is something about the Jews, not the Christians. Remember, this is now when the whole world sees him. If you read your Revelation, you know he doesn't come then till the end of the seven years. This is at the very end of the seven years, Christians. And he gathers his elect, which are the Jews. If you bother to read any of the Old Testament, he promises he's going to come and restore them. He's going to save them from final destruction and restore them. The Christians he's already saved. Okay, so this history is about the Jews. Next verse. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twig get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Okay, so which day does no man know? The day or the hour? Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Father? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour. Which day or hour? The day or hour that heaven and earth pass away. He just told them heaven and earth will pass away. I mean, that's, that's kind of new when you've been promising kingdom, in, kingdom on the earth, when you're talking about God in heaven and your whole premise to these people for thousands of years are these two points, kingdom on earth. God in heaven and now you say heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away no one knows about that day or hour not even the angels of heaven nor the sun I don't even know what day or hour heaven and earth are going to pass away so this is the um, you know this is sort of the traditional teaching on no man knows the day or the hour read your Matthew 24 and understand it's a um, it's Jesus talking to the Jews and uh, we're going to go into more what that really means but uh, no man knows the day or the hour doesn't apply to Christians knowing about the time of the end uh, the rapture of the church all of these things are clearly demonstrated in scripture by the, the feast time set by God and the different moon cycles and sun cycles that bring us to points in the calendar where things happen as they're supposed to, which is, as I say, why the Orthodox Jews know that uh, the Messiah must come on a spring feast. He came last time and died on the Passover and was raised on first fruits. 
So it seems reasonable to imagine that the dead will raise on first fruits again in fulfillment of their expectation. Remember, this is to convince the Jews that he really is the Messiah. The Christians are already convinced. What we're trying to do as Christians is get our minds squared on what do these scriptures really mean for us at this time. And so you have to separate what's written to these people who never did accept the Messiah and have a whole different vision at the end than the people that did accept the Messiah. Paul says, are children of the light and not appointed unto wrath.